Hi, my name is Paul Singh. I'm from the Eye Centers of Racine and Kenosha in southeastern Wisconsin. Well, today our session was really new devices in glaucoma, both on the laser side as well as one of the incisional side. Well, first of all, I think we're seeing that the excitement and the proliferation of technology that we started back in 2012 with the iStent and others, we're seeing that continue. So there's a lot, a lot of excitement on new technology, both on the laser side and incisional side. I think the more grand scheme of things, it's all about patient satisfaction and quality of life, as well as bringing IOP down. And so safety is a big part of it. And what we found and we saw today, both with the laser side, as well as the incisional procedures, is that the high safety was maintained. And high safety is important because for us to really move the needle to earlier intervention of glaucoma to take away compliance and adherence as an issue, we have to justify the surgery by giving us high safety. So what was nice is here both on the laser side with the SLT, there was kind of ab external transcleral SLT, there was something called ELT, which is a procedure that makes an otomy or makes it rather an opening into the conventional pathway. We have all these devices and procedures that are allowing us better outflow but yet maintaining a high safety profile. And I think that's the key for us, giving us options, but also within the framework of a very safe opportunity for these patients to hopefully not rely on drops for the rest of their life. I think the main benefit of all these new type of procedures is the ability for us to hopefully better control their glaucoma, less potential for fluctuating pressures, hopefully achieve lower target pressures, but yet maintain a high safety and a high quality of life. You know, up until the last few years, in glaucoma, quality of life, although we wanted it, it was never really a reality. It was either take drops and torture yourself with drops after three, four medications, and then eventually do a trabeculectomy, which we all know has its own issues. And so now this whole MIG space has allowed us to kind of bridge the both worlds, provide earlier intervention to get them off a lot of these drops, to take away compliance, adherence, cost, side effects of medications away, but yet, maintain high safety profiles as well. So I think what's gonna benefit patients is our ability to take the control back to us as providers, not have to worry about is the patient taking a medication? Are they fluctuating? And if you look at the data, for instance, today it was presented at the Horizon trial, the Hydra stent. They showed that after three years, patients who had the Hydra's with cataract surgery versus the cataract surgery alone, in the Hydra's group, 85% less chance of needing incisional surgery in three years. That's really telling us that we are hopefully preventing people from getting worse. And part of that might be not just IOP reduction, but also compliance, improving compliance. So I think more and more now than ever before, we're appreciating how much compliance can affect IOP control and long-term disease progression. And so now with these different devices, whether it's the laser devices, whether it's an incisional device, because the safety is higher, why are we waiting till the patient has three or four medications? Even if the pressures look good, the visual fields may be stable now or two years from now, we know that over time, it's not always gonna be stable. So if we can intervene earlier, we have a better chance of halting the progression. Well, actually what's interesting is a lot of our patients who may have, let's say, a narrow angle glaucoma, after you take out the cataract, or even while taking out the cataract, we can deepen up the angle, or post-LPI, laser peripheral rhodotomy, we can do a laser and actually open up the angle. So there's a number of patients who have what we call combined mechanism glaucoma, where they have a narrow angle, decreased outflow, you do a laser or a cataract surgery, and you can see the drainage system, you can see the TM, the trabecular meshwork, but their outflow is still not uh, improved and therefore we can apply a lot of these newer devices these lasers even SLT afterwards to help us achieve additional reduction even after the angle is open so a number of narrow angle patients can actually develop kind of an open angle type of appearance where we can apply a lot of these different devices and procedures but even in patients who have narrow angle some of the procedures we can still do for those patients Now, I think what's unique about Glaucoma 360 is the accessibility of not only industry, but providers, from financers. I think they're seeing a number of different disciplines of healthcare in the eye care industry coming together and are very accessible to each other. There are very few other opportunities I've seen in my career and other meetings where I have access to all these disciplines of healthcare in one sitting. And they're more than happy to share their experiences. You know, I think there's a very open forum where sharing ideas is welcomed. And, and again, the goal is to help advance our field and prevent blindness. And so I think to me, this is a really unique opportunity. And for those who have not attended this meeting before, absolutely, I think it's worthwhile attending.